We're a little over a year out from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, a New York community bank reigniting concerns in the regional banking sector after raising its loan loss allowance. Our next guest thinks there might still be some of the same lingering fragilities that led to SVB's collapse. For more on this, we have Stephen Kelly, Yale Program on Financial Stability, Associate Director of Research. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. So first, I want to, to take a look at what's been happening with um, New York Community Bank here. Obviously, a different beast than Silicon Valley Bank. But what are some of the fragilities that this is highlighting? Well, it's sort of the, the classic, you know, bank recessionary type dynamic. So, uh, you know, we're not in a recession now, but we had a, you know, a tech and crypto recession a year ago that sort of turned into the SVB collapse. And now we're kind of in this weird commercial real estate space where it looks like there's going to be, you know, a lot of stress in, in CRE, at least for the next couple of years. And so what we see are these specialized banks, you know, you, you sort of can't be large and have the attention of the market and be specialized. Because if you see, a, you know, a recession in that sector by itself, uh, it's going to take the bank with it. And so then as we look back on the SVB anniversary then, is it fair then to look at those lessons and compare them to what we're seeing um, with New York Community Bank? You know, it's very much a different animal. There's much less panic this time around. So this is sort of an extension, right? We're talking about fragilities that ultimately go back to a higher interest rate environment. You know, the Fed moved very fast on interest rates uh, in a way that the market wasn't expecting. But the market has had a year to look at banks and sort of differentiate between what's strong and what's not and what similarities are actually, you know, dr can drive a, a, you know, financial distress. And so we've really seen not much contagion to other regional banks, other banks in general. Uh, so it's sort of a different animal and, and really focused on NYCB. And I want to talk about some of the, the narratives that came out of SVB, whether it was, you know, the role of social media or some of the speed of these financial transactions now um, that people have been talking about. When you look at that, how accurate is that when you, we now have the luxury of hindsight a year later? Yeah, it, it, it sort of doesn't stack up, right? Because modern bank runs really are institutional. They're about large dollar balances. Uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of hay made over circles, $3.3 billion, right? This is not, you know, somebody who's looking at Twitter or using their digital banking apps to transfer money out. Uh, we sort of have this sort of romantic historic notion of bank runs as people lining up outside, but that's really not how modern bank runs work. And the social media and digital app story is really a retail story. And that's just not at the core of modern bank runs, which happen by large institutions with large uninsured deposits. So for people who are wondering about perhaps investing in some of these regional banks, what should they be aware of, given that they are such different beasts, some of these very specialized lenders, one that focused on, you know, more so startups that needed more liquidity versus what we're seeing with commercial real estate and New York Community Bank? Yeah, this is something where it really pays to understand the macro story behind the balance sheet. So you really can't have a, a banking panic without some sort of macro story. In 2008, it was basically the whole economy, right? The housing sector and the, the business model of all of Wall Street looked bad. Uh, this time around, we didn't see that. We saw sort of the, the macro forces really take down tech and crypto last year, and now are working on CRE. And so following that story from, okay, what is the macro sector that's hurting and how is it going to affect the deposit side of a bank balance sheet is really the way to analyze this story. Uh, and, you know, like I alluded to, 2008 was very much a different story where you had the, the balance sheet and the business model of all of Wall Street basically break down. And that was never really a risk here, right? We, we sort of got a list of names last March, techie banks, you know, venture capital banks. Uh, and now we're kind of looking at CRE banks, particularly with New York. And so then, Stephen, in terms of the risks ahead and how some of the legislation that came about as a result of SVB's collapse could potentially either prevent or, or perhaps limit the impact of future risks in the regional banking system, what have you got your eye on there? Well, the Fed has very much been talking about the discount window lately and its provision of emergency liquidity, right? SVB and Signature were very much not prepared to borrow from the discount window. This is not a panacea. Some, some folks like to think this can save a bank. It can buy them a couple days. Um, and it's good for, for containing systemic risk, right? Because everybody's liquidity demands go up once, once there's a banking panic. Uh, so that, that one regulators seem very on top of, and you're hearing momentum from Fed officials on that. Other things that we heard in the aftermath, like deposit insurance, uh, not, we're not hearing so much. There's basically no momentum. Obviously, Basel III endgame and higher capital requirements, not really addressing what we saw in the last year. Uh, although some folks have made it out to be uh, sort of a, a treatment for what we saw last March, it, it really predates that. And it looks like it's in a lot of trouble politically.